So we have a function f of x that's written as the product of a bunch of first degree expressions. Now if we, we obviously could also view this as a polynomial, especially if we expand this all out, it'll have our more traditional form. But what's nice about this form, and this is where, where we try to get when we're trying to find the zeros or the roots of a polynomial, is that it's very easy to pick out the zeros. The zeros here, these are the x values that make our function equal to zero. Well, that's going to be x is equal to two, x is equal to negative four, that would make this expression zero, x is equal to negative five. Remember, if you make any one of these equal to zero, then the entire function is going to be equal to zero, because zero times anything is zero. x equals one, and x is equal to nine. Now, as we've talked about in multiple videos, these are also going to be, the, if these x values, when you input into the function, give you f of two equals zero, f of negative four is equal to zero, then that means that they're also going to define our x-intercepts. What am I talking about? So let me draw, let me draw a big axis here. Let's see, we go as low as x equals negative five, as high as x equals nine. So let me draw it something like this. So it's my y-axis, this is my x-axis. X is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now let's just plot these. So when X is equal to two, F of two we already know is zero. If you input two here, then this expression is going to be zero. Zero times a bunch of stuff is going to be zero. So F of two is equal to zero. So the point two comma zero, is going to be on the graph of y equals f of x. So one, two, comma, zero. So that's that point right over there. So notice, x equals, zero is, x equals two is a zero and makes our function it equal to zero if you input it into it. And it's also the point two, comma, zero. It's going to be the x coordinate uh, of, it's going to be the x coordinate of this point right over here. It's going to define our x, inter, or one of our x intercepts. Let's do it with the other ones x is equal to negative four. I can do that with a better color. x is equal to negative four. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Right over there, x is equal to negative five. x is equal to negative five. x is equal to one. I do that in, uh, I will do that in pink. x is equal to one. And x is equal to nine. And x is equal to nine, that was that right over there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm not going to be able to exactly draw the graph of this function, but what's neat is I can realize, well look, if these are the points where I'm going to intercept the x-axis, and these are the only points where I'm going to intercept the x-axis. The zeros, the real zeros define the, the, all of the points at which I'm going to intercept the x-axis. Because think about it, if there was a point that intercepted the x-axis that wasn't a zero, well, it would be a zero, because the function would take on the value zero there. So between those points, if the function will, will stay positive or will stay negative. And we can, we can test that a little bit. Let's think, about, let's think about what the function is doing between x equals negative four and x equals one. So over this interval right over here. Well, let's, let's just pick a value there and then think about whether the function is going to be positive or negative at that value. And an easy value to think about is maybe zero. And I just want to think about the sign. Is the function going to be positive or negative when x is equal to zero? So f of zero, f of zero. I'm just going to think about its sign. So the f of zero is going to be zero minus two. Well, that's going to be negative. Zero plus four, that's going to be positive. Zero plus five, that's going to be positive. Zero minus one is going to be negative. Zero minus nine is going to be negative. So we can see, since at, at x equals zero, we're going to get a, let's see, negative, this is going to be a negative times a negative, which would be a positive, but then we multiply by a negative again. So this is going to be equal to, this is going to get us to a negative. So the function is going to take on a negative value here, and we know it's going to take on a negative value over this entire interval, over this entire interval. Because if for some reason it took on a positive value over that entire, over that interval, it's a continuous function. It would have to cross the x-axis and that would define another zero. But we know there aren't any zeros between these two points. So the function, I don't know what it looks like, but it's going to stay positive between those two values. 
Now, as you go through the next interval, it's probably going to change signs. And we can verify that. If you look at f, if you look at, say, f of negative 4.5, so we'll do the same drill, f of negative 4.5, well, that's going to be, that's going to be a, let's see, negative times a negative times a positive. Negative 4.5 plus 5 is a positive times a negative times a negative. Well, we have an even number of negatives being multiplied together here, so this is going to give us a positive. So this is going to give us a positive value. So we're going to have a positive value between these two points, and then we're likely to flip back to negative after that. So then the graph is likely to flip back flip back to negative. Right over there, and you can test that. Try a, try a really negative value. So f of negative 10. Well, that's going to be a negative times a negative times a negative. Let's see, times a negative times a negative times a negative. So you have five negatives being multiplied together. You're going to have a negative. Hopefully you see where all of this is going. So this is, we're likely to switch signs here. You can test 1.5 and see if you get a positive value. Then we're likely to switch back here. And once again, the graph isn't going to look exactly like this. The, it, might, it might dip. It might be fairly shallow here. And then it might dip down a lot right here. I'm just making up the parts on the ups and downs. And then it probably does another sign change right over there. And we can verify that if f of positive 10 well, that's going to be a positive times a positive times a positive times a positive times a positive. Times a positive times a positive. So we're a positive after that. And I don't know exactly what it looks like. But the key, the key realization here is that the zeros are the only places that are going to intercept the x-axis. And between those zeros, if you are positive, if you're positive on that interval, you're going to be positive on any point. If you're positive at one point in that interval, you're going to be positive at any point in that interval. And if you're negative at any point in that interval, then you're going to be negative throughout the interval. And of course, at the ends of the interval, you're going to be at zero. So if someone were to say, what is the sign of f? If someone would say sine of f on the interval on, say, negative 4 is less than x is less than 1. Well, that's this interval. It goes from negative 4 to 1. So that's the interval we actually started off with. That's that interval right over there. You'd say, oh, well, look, f is always negative on this interval if you don't include the endpoints. And we're not including the endpoints here. We don't have a less than or equal either point here. So here it's always negative. If someone gave you a different interval, if they gave you an interval that includes where 0 is part of the interval, so if someone said, if someone said the interval from, I don't know, the interval from 1 to 9, well, that's going to include a 0 in it. So it's going to be positive. It's going to be sometimes positive and sometimes negative on this interval. So the key is between the two between two roots, not including the two roots. If you have an interval between two roots, then you're always going to be positive or you're always going to be negative over that interval. Whatever the sign is at any point in the interval is going to be signed throughout that interval, not including the endpoints.